Hey, Mike Rain here with Canadian Musician, and I have the absolute pleasure uh, of sitting next to Matt Anderson, one of the best uh, blues players, blues singers, and writers that Canada has produced in a long while. Uh, multiple ECMA winner, Maple Blues Award winner, and also I believe the first Canadian to win the International Blues Challenge down in Memphis. So, uh, and... My, uh, well, I should note that you grew up in Perth Andover, New Brunswick, uh, moved to Cape Breton, I believe, and now I believe you just said you're living in Wolfville, Nova Scotia, so uh, East Coast well represented in the blues. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but first of all, man, just thank you for joining me today and inviting me. Oh, thanks for having me in, man. And uh, so, as I mentioned, you grew up in Perth Andover, uh, not exactly a hotbed of the blues, uh, big folk tradition, obviously, in the Maritimes, but where did the love of the blues first start for you then? Um, for me, I think it was the same way a lot of people. I heard like Steve Ray Vaughan first and B.B. King and Eric Clapton, those like the more mainstream guys, and uh, just started digging into their influences a lot and kind of looking at, you know, digging further and further into the music, and then uh, the more I dug into it, the more I got into it, I guess. Nice. Uh, so at what point did you start singing and playing and writing for yourself? Uh, probably about 2002, somewhere around there. I was in a band, we were doing a lot of pub covers, that kind of stuff, and I realized you can only go so far playing Brian Eyed Girl and Mustang Sally every night, so... Uh, <laughs> So that's when I started writing, yeah, I put an EP out that year and just, um, yeah, started, you know, hitting, hitting more folk festivals, that kind of stuff. And, yeah. How old would you have been at that point? So, 22, somewhere around there, yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. So, uh, I guess at 22, uh, I wouldn't say it's a late time to get into uh, writing, performing, and starting your own music career, but it is later than many, and especially many that have reached the success you've had so quickly. Uh, at what point, I believe... I saw somewhere that you actually came to London, Ontario at some point to study recording. So at what point did a dream of uh, having a career in music on the recording producing side turn into a career of being your own artist? Um, yeah, I mean, I always wanted to be involved with music. That's why I took the recording course, because I never counted on being able to play professionally. And this never was. You know, music was the stuff that we did at home. It wasn't a, wasn't a job, I guess, really. And um, yeah, then I just started, you know, working at home and I was doing music probably three or four nights a week and working, you know, seven days, seven days a week where I was wearing my day job. and. Uh, I knew I had to quit one of them, so I went for music. And you know, for a long time, I still did the pub stuff when I was still playing. But um, eventually, I, like I said, I just made the switch over to doing, doing my own thing. You've been extremely uh, prolific, and as you just said, I was surprised to hear that you say you just started writing your own music around 22 yeah. to have produced as much content as you have. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I believe it's been nine or ten recordings, including live albums, in yeah. as many years. Yeah. Uh, I guess, did songwriting just come as a natural ability or process for you? What was that like? Um, yeah, I mean, I started out pretty, um, started out going for it right away, I guess. You know, I, I definitely think the songs have gotten better over the years. You know, <laughs> I think so. I mean, a lot of people have been following me since, you know, my first started playing. They've, you know, seen a progression, I think, of, you know, my writing and playing, you know, and singing and performance, all that. Because when I first started playing live, you know, I was pretty fresh at it, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's been fun, though. It's been kind of fun getting those shops early on, you know, with, with the audience and not having to, you know, it was trial by fire, I guess is the way to put that, yeah. It's who are your songwriting influences? Uh, Stan Rogers is one for me for sure. Uh, Jim Croce, always liked his stuff. Uh, John Fogarty's been a big one for me. His playing, everything for him, yeah. And as is common in blues tradition, also folk tradition, your songs are often story songs, mm -hmm. or you're telling a story, obviously, within your songs. Uh, where do those tales come from? Do you start off with a story that you want to tell, or do you start writing a song and the story emerges? What is, how does that work? Uh, no, it usually starts off, you know, for me when I write, I have to kind of have the roadmap planned out a little bit for me to get, you know, then I just tell the story and yeah. make it rhyme, really, is what it comes to <laughs> after a while. So, um, yeah, I guess that's, that's usually my process as far as that. You know, I kind of know what I'm going to start singing about. You know, it can take a turn sometimes for sure. Um, you know, and writing with different people, everybody has a different process. You know, you try different things. One guy I wrote with, you know, he starts with a title and just lets everything trickle down from there, which is, you know, it's kind of cool. It's a different exercise that way for sure. But um, now my process has always been, you know, kind of have a roadmap laid out and then you know, find the best way to get there. <laughs> is that does that mean a roadmap as far as the actual story itself, or do you start with the melody? What is um, what is the process? Sometimes a melody comes in, but I guess it's, lyrically, I guess when I think of that, I kind of have an idea of where the song's going to start anyway. It's kind of a story, and you know, you know, if it's about a guy or whatever, sometimes you have to decide halfway through. Do you want it to be a happy ending, sad ending, just a you know middle of the road kind of thing? So it's just um, you know things definitely evolve as you get writing. You know different ideas come in, and you decide you know where you want to take stuff. But. And a lot is made uh, 
of your blues guitar abilities and for obvious reasons and well well deserved but i was listening to you i'm always impressed by your voice you just have a very distinctive voice but also you sing with such conviction what is the key was that always did that come naturally to you what's the key to being a great blues singer um just singing in general i guess you know is meaning what you're singing i think um that was one thing that drew me to blues when I first saw it live. You know, everybody was singing. You could really feel the guy when, they were, when he was doing it. You know, you can't, um, you can't fake it, I guess. You can feel it in any genre. You can feel it somebody just putting it on. So I guess that's how I said that I want to make sure I wasn't one of those guys. So with my writing, I try to make sure I'm putting something real and personal on there. And it, you know, if it's not a song about me, at least having some kind of connection so I can deliver it with conviction and not just, uh, not just telling the story but living it, I guess. Is there a blues, a uh, vibrant blues scene in the Maritimes that you were able to tap into? Or? Absolutely, yeah, a lot of really great blues players. Um, a lot of the guys I learned from, you know, watching when I was, you know, getting to Hal moved into Halifax and started going to the clubs there. Um, a lot of those guys had grew up playing with, you know, like Sun House and Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. You know, they, I've been really lucky to have a lot of that connection through those guys. Yeah, yeah really great blues scene. I mean, Dutch Masons, you know, probably one of the most popular, you know, names in, in Canadian blues for sure. Yeah. And the as I mentioned before, the Maritimes have a strong folk tradition. Mm -hmm. I find there is a definite folk uh, influence within your music. Yeah. The two genres of blues and folk are pretty intertwined in a lot of ways. But did that maritime folk influence, uh, I should say, I guess, influence you in, in many ways? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the story stuff comes from that side of it. Um, you know, I, blues was something that came to me later on in, in my musical life. So it was, you know, I grew up on fiddle music, you know, like a lot of us did, I guess. And, yeah. uh, you know, lots of old country, lots of classic rock. So, I mean, it was all kind of a, more of a hodgepodge in my head than, you know, just one kind of specific kind of genre that I went for. And uh, over, you've worked with a number of uh, established producers, but uh, I believe on your last album, uh, Coal Mining Blues, you worked with Colin Linden, yeah. and on the new album, uh, which I should have mentioned earlier, is called Weightless, and uh, you're working with Steve Berlin, two very well-established producers. Uh, what were each of them able to bring to you as a songwriter and to the sound? Um, as a songwriter, Colin and I did a lot of co-writing for Coal Mining Blues. You know, we hadn't really met up all that much before and knew each other a little bit. So that was kind of a way just to kind of make sure when we got in the studio there was no awkward, you know, you didn't want to offend the guy by saying something like that. Um, so yeah, that was just really getting to know each other. So we decided we might as well write some songs. So we did it. So it was really cool writing with Colin. He thinks of songs, you know, um, he thinks of bridges a lot, which I don't. You know, it was really cool that way. And um, with Steve, you know, a lot of the songs I had written... It's not a songwriter so much, but arrangement-wise is where Steve really stepped in a lot. You know, it, a lot of the tunes I wrote were kind of, started to have the, kind of the same groove, I guess, after a while. And Steve was really cool, but, you know, changing things up and making sure the album didn't just sound like, you know, the same thing the whole way through. The band that plays on uh, Weightless, is it the same band that's on the road with you right now? or uh, No, I, go, I play solo. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I do maybe three or four band gigs a year, so it's mostly just uh, just me out there. But um, they're my, you know, my first call guys when I'm, when I'm at home, yeah, for sure, if I use the band. I guess in that case then, and you'll be playing a show tonight, uh, when you're playing solo just yourself, your guitar on stage, uh, you have a big presence, uh, figuratively and <laughs> literally. Uh, what's the key to holding a, an audience's rapt attention when you're just there by yourself? Um you need to be as engaging as possible. It doesn't need to be, you don't need to be screaming at them, you know, you know saying, hey, sing along with me, that kind of stuff. You need to be, uh, you know, dynamics are a big thing for me, you know, and just make sure it's not just, um, I think being involved in what you're doing too, you know, not a, not getting too self-involved in being a musician, but also in you know, the fact that you're, you're in a room with people who are listening to you. So we kind of try and keep that back and forth there as much as I can. And uh, the, the upcoming album, again, it's called Weightless, will be dropping in early February, yeah. February 4th. I believe it's also your first on True North Records. And uh, True North's an, obviously an iconic record label in Canadian music. So how did that partnership come about? Uh, well, my, my manager, uh, Louis, he kind of, he put the feelers out when we were, uh, you know, looking at management and we releasing the new album. And yeah. um, he mentioned True North. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I have a lot of friends who, who are on True North. You know, it's never been something I've looked at before, but... Um, it seems like a really good pairing. I'm really excited to be with them. I'm looking forward to it. Did they have any, uh, I guess, was that signing with True North, was that done after Weightless was finished or before? Pretty much during. Yeah, it was all uh, kind of all happened at the same time, really. Um, yeah, so there wasn't a whole lot of, um, I guess, really like they were, they were totally cool to take what, what I was bringing. They weren't looking to kind of mold in any way or, you know, to dictate, yeah. And uh, so I guess now we're going to do a performance. Uh, we haven't discussed it, so what song uh, would you like to do? I'm going to do a tune called uh, I Lost My Way. All right, right on. And once again, Weightless drops on February 4th. Uh, Matt Anderson, 
killer player, killer voice. Be sure to check him out. You're on uh, you're on the road all across Canada, I believe, starting uh, starting this week, I think. Uh, eh? Tomorrow night, I head down to Boston and start my tour there for three weeks in the States, then head up and hit the West Coast and head east and back to Quebec and back and forth for the next few months. So. And I also should mention that uh, you have a huge concert coming up at the iconic uh, Massey Hall. Yeah, March, uh, 1st. March 1st. March 1st. And uh, before we get into the performance, I just have to ask about that. Massey Hall is hosted neil young uh you know leonard cohen johnny cash all the legends what what are you anticipating about that show i I don't nothing really i'm just really looking forward to it yeah it's going to be you know my first gig in toronto was you know a a small outside gig so it's really cool to be uh, coming back and you know doing my own show at massey and it looks like it's going to have a really good crowd in there so I'm, i'm pretty pumped about it right on it seems like with each album you're uh the acclaim keeps getting bigger the audiences keep getting bigger and uh, i'm sure it's going to be nothing different with the wait list so i can't wait to hear it man thanks man Now I don't know where I am, but I know what you say. 